الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يدلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبد رسول صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تمسك بسنته إلى يوم الدين أما بعد So in continuing discussing uh, the topic of uh, Tariq al-Fiqh, or also referred to as Madhal ila Fiqh al-Islam, regarding concerning discussing matters that relates to the Tariq, the history of Fiqh, and the development of Fiqh, and also referred to as the, the, the evolution of the Madhahib. So, <coughs> so, instead, so today, inshallah ta'ala, we'll be open to discuss concerning, as we are reached concerning the era of the the Tabi'een, so a discussing concerning of those things regarding the development of fiqh during the time of the Tabi'een that we had <coughs> mentioned regarding concerning Kibara Tabi'een regarding establishing certain institutions or cer that they establish certain places of learning so and uh, during that time of Kibara uh, Tabi'een that uh, what was established then was regarding concerning different placing different different places or cities having different uh, individuals uh, establishing places of learning so we discussed concerning Medina and some of the ulama of Medina, also in Mecca, also in other places. So in continuing concern that matter, uh, in continuing regarding this, <coughs> that the next stage regarding concerning this is regarding the establishment of the madaris. So after discussing, uh, after regarding establishing concerning cities of places of learning, then also we have certain madaris. So uh, three main madaris evolved, or we said two, and then the third being an extension, but there was two main madaris regarding the establishment or the next regarding development of the fiqh amongst the, the tabi'in. So what we have found regarding concerning that uh, <coughs> that uh, of the, <coughs> the these madaris that uh, we'll be discussing concerning of these madaris that start to be established. So of those madaris that they mentioned that there is three uh, or we, we start with two main madaris. So what the first two uh, these madaris <coughs> that uh, one was established in uh, Medina, so they refer to as the, uh, that is concerning the Madrasa of Alil Hadith, and the second, the Madrasa of Alil Al Rahi. So those are two main madaris that uh, were established in the different different regions. One referred to as Madrasa Alil Hadith, the Madrasa of Alil Hadith, the school of Alil Hadith, and the second being that of Alil Rahi. So uh, as for those two schools, that uh, uh, they are the ones that try to take shape regarding the approach regarding studying of fiqh. So regarding concerning the study of fiqh, concerning Madaris al fiqhiyah that they start to take those two approaches regarding that either they are more inclined towards the Madrasa of Ailil Hadith uh, or the Madrasa of Ailil uh, <coughs> al Rahi. So regarding concerning those Madaris, that uh, Ailil, uh, uh, the Madrasa of Ailil uh, Hadith that uh, was more established in places like Medina and Mecca that refer to as Al-Hijaz, and the Madras of Al-Rahi was more established in the places of Kufa. So the Madaris, they start to take on that shape regarding concerning these two approaches regarding the study and teaching of Fiqh. So, <coughs> so as for these uh, two Madaris that will first start regarding, uh, discussing regarding the Madras of Al Hadith and then discuss concerning the Madras of Al Al-Rahi. So as for the, the Madras of Al Al uh, Hadith, that uh, this particular uh, madrasa, that uh, it was so much more established regarding in Medina and Hijaz, that was the two places of where it is, was established mainly. And that uh, madrasa, it was affected by some of the renown of the companions regarding the likes of Abdullah, Ibn Omar, and the likes, and Aisha, that they were the people who kind of somewhat, they were the... <coughs> uh, that uh, this, uh, mad this madrasa was an extension regarding their approach regarding reliance heavily on hadith, reliance heavily upon hadith, and also the reliance also on the aqwal of the, uh, the sahaba. So this madrasa, it took this, uh, 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 took this uh, approach. So regarding concerning this uh, madrasa, as uh, the ulama have mentioned also, you'll find that other of the ulama who took that approach regarding, not necessarily that they were from Ali Hijaz, from Mecca or Medina, but they took that approach. So they took that approach regarding that uh, regarding emphasis being placed upon hadith and athar as a way regarding approaching of fiqh and less regarding matters regarding ar rahi <coughs> So of those uh, areas also that the madras of Ali al-Hadith also was also uh, established in place like Sham and also Misr. So we'll find the likes of Al-Awzahi, that uh, also the ulama of Sham that had that approach, also find a like, uh, <coughs> and we also find in Misr 
the likes of Late Ibn Sa'd, also from Misr, but they took the approach of Ali al Hadith. So their madrasa was more of the approach uh, of Ali al Hadith regarding emphasis placed upon studying of Hadith by way of first authenticating Hadith and also extracting uh, rulings directly from the from the Hadith. So you find other the ulama also that was inclined towards that method that were not from Ali al Hijaz. Of those also who were inclined towards that method regarding concern the likes of ulama of Basra, the likes of Ayyub al Sakhtayani. Hamad ibn Zayd, Abdul Rahman ibn Mahdi. So those likes also became, they were uh, the ulama of hadith. So their inclination regarding concerning fiqh also was taking the approach of Ali hadith. So even though they were not of Medina and Mecca, but their approach was that of Ali hadith, which is they put em uh, emphasis regarding hadith, regarding things going back to the, uh, to the Prophet Islam, and also to the, the Sahaba and those who came before them of the, the Tabi'een. So regarding this, uh, this uh, madrasa, they start to, as mentioned, uh, take shape regarding concern that, you know, the, the likes of, uh, of the, uh, the Khalifa, uh, some of the Khalifa also aided and were more inclined to that approach of them, Omar ibn Abdul Aziz. So you, uh, you would also refer matters back to the ulama of hadith. So uh, that kind of somewhat aided that particular method. So as it spread, it started to be spread regarding concern that in, in Medina, also that method also started to be established in places like Baghdad. Uh, and also they mentioned so that's concerned the matter it started to spread outside Medina and Mecca so you find the likes of Ahmed ibn Hanbal who was from the people of uh, of Baghdad so Ahmed ibn Hanbal later on Abu Ubaid of the people the ulama of uh, of uh, Baghdad but also they took the approach of Ali al-Medina they took the approach concerning the approach of Ali of Ali al-Hadith regarding approaching concerning matters concerning al-fiqh and also you have the likes also of Ishaq ibn, Ibra, uh, Ishaq ibn Ibrahim ibn Rahuya uh, and the likes Ibn Abdullah ibn Mubarak so their approach was regarding the approach of Ali al-Hadith regarding study of, uh, of fiqh so as this method start to be established as an approach not per se uh, restricted to a particular region but also a approach regarding al-fiqh so as this method start to be approached they find certain individuals who became concerned at that time the ulama who became uh, known regarding they were the ones who uphold this method <coughs> so you find the ulama certain ulama they start to be known as the one who was the ulama, who were said to be the ones who were upholding of this, uh, up, up all this approach regarding al-fiqh, and uh, of the likes of those concerning that we have the likes of Imam Malik, Imam Shafi, Ahmed, Sufyan Athori, and uh, so those are the ones who were said to be of the ulama who represent this method, and uh, it is stated regarding concerning Shahrastani, so uh, Shahrastani, so Shahrastani, he mentioned in his book concerning Al-Milal wal Nahl that he mentioned Ashab al-Hadith concerning who's as uh, Ashab al-Hadith. Ashab al-Hadith, the companions of Hadith, whom Ali al-Ijaz, they are the, the people of Hijaz, whom Ashab al-Malik, also they are the ones who are the companions of Malik, Ibn Anas, wa Ashab Muhammad ibn Idris al-Shafi, wa Ashab Sufyan al-Thawri, wa Ashab Dawood ibn Ali al-Fahani. So he mentioned regarding concerning the people who are said then to be of Ali al-Hadith, that became that those ulama, that they became the one who was considered to be the one who represent Ali al-Hadith. So he mentioned different names of the ulama that uh, were said to be the ones who were the ones who were behind this particular uh, approach. So you find the ulama uh, <coughs> and others that they mentioned regarding concerning that uh, <coughs> even ulama they mentioned concerning as uh, mentioned by Al-Bayhaqi, of the ulama Yahya bin Muhammad, uh, Muhammad Al-Ambari, that uh, he mentioned called Tawakat Ashab al-Hadith Khamsa. So, Yahya ibn Muhammad, Ambari, that he mentioned, Tabakat, the level of uh, 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 the different uh, levels of Ashab al Hadith, Khamsa, that they are five. He mentioned Malikiyah, second, Shafi'iyah, third, Hanbaliyah, fourth, Rahawiyah, fifth, Khuzamiyah, Khuzamiyah, and he mentioned concerning. Uh, Khazamiyah, uh, regarding concerning, and they mentioned concerning that were intended regarding uh, Malik, Imam Malik, Shafi, Imam Shafi, the Hanbaliyah, as Imam uh, <coughs> Ahmed, Rahawiyah, uh, or Rahawiyah, that he mentioned, being Ishaq ibn Rahawi, and also Khuzamiyah, that he mentioned those being concerning Atba of Muhammad ibn Ishaq ibn Khuzayma. So Ibn Khuzayma, uh, also, he was considered to be one of the of these were considered to be the kibar or the of Ali hadith and that uh, their approach represent concerning the way of Ali hadith <coughs> so
So that's concerning of those who were said to be of early hadith and during that time then also it was also followed like in the second and the third century regarding concerning of those who also uphold this approach regarding early hadith that of the kibar of them that came after in the second and the third century they mentioned Yahya ibn Sa'id al-Qattan of the ulama of hadith also Waqiya ibn Jarrah Sufyan al-Thuri Sufyan ibn Uyayna Shuba ibn, Hija uh, Shuba ibn Hajjaj Abdul Rahman ibn Mahdi Awzahi Late ibn Sa'd So these are the ulama in the second and the, uh, and the third century who were thought to be the one who represent Ali Hadith and the ulama of Ali Hadith <coughs> based upon how they approach concerning uh, matters concerning fiqh but also that they were known to be ulama of Hadith so people also who place a lot of emphasis regarding the study of Hadith and the reason they mention a reason behind why they refer to as Ali Hadith so so <coughs> why this uh, madrasa is referred to as Ali Hadith that I mentioned that as mentioned by Shah Rastani that I mentioned in the Masamu Ali Hadith the Ashab al Hadith that they are referred to as Ali Hadith لِأَنَّ إِنَايَتُهُمْ بِتَحْصِيرَ hadith because of the emphasis that they place regarding uh, accumulating Hadith regarding concern the emphasis they place upon accumulating of Hadith or uh, 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 establishing hadith, Bible said, Banakhla Akbar, by way of concerning transmission of hadith, and also Bina al Ahkam al Nasus, and also that they'll try to extract uh, Ahkam based upon the text. So these were the things that, and I mentioned, La Yarjuna il al Khiyas, Jali, Wala Yarjuna il al Khiyas, Jali, Wal Khafi, Ma Wajidu Khabaran, or Atharan, and that they will not per se rely or go back to Khiyas, whether this Khiyas is said to be Jali. Or khafi, what is said to be very apparent or hidden, that they mention ma wajidu khabaran aw atharan, except if they are able, <coughs> on, <coughs> uh, if they are able to find a hadith or a athar. So their reliance was upon hadith wal athar, more so less upon uh, al qiyas. So they became known for this. So they mention akanu yakrahuna al khawd fi bil rahi, and also the things al hadith that they were known that they dislike uh, uh, engaging in things concerning al rahi, concerning opinions. <coughs> and also they mention وَيَهَابُونَ الْفُتْيَا وَالْإِسْتِنْبَاتِ إِلَّا لِدُرُورَةٍ لَا تَجِدُ لَا يَجِدُونَ مِنْهَا بُدْ And also that they dislike concerning that uh, so that's concerning the approach uh, concerning giving of uh, futya or istimbat regarding concerning things of rahi uh, so they dislike of this so they dislike concerning that uh, can be taken from rahi but for them they rely that uh, uh, the emphasis is to be placed uh, on a hadith wal athar that was their approach. So it became the madrasa regarding of the theme, regarding the madrasa of Ali Hadith, that the emphasis was placed regarding hadith, regarding the narration of hadith, regarding extracting, taking rulings from the hadith, uh, and they include concerning hadith, meaning concerning hadith for them also include aqwal of the Sahaba. So uh, the hadith also would include concerning aqwal of the, the and, uh, and, uh, and uh, the fatah of the, the Sahaba. So that was their emphasis. And also they dislike concerning the, uh, the use of uh, Rahi unnecessarily. So uh, the use concerning al Qiyas, that uh, they did not like uh, uh, indulging into Qiyas, except in cases where it was required. But if there's text, then to be given precedent. <coughs> and also concerning the matters of Ali Hadith, that also that they were of the ones who were, the ones who were foremost regarding concerning Tadween or Sunnah. So that Madrasa, of the ulama of hadith that they were the foremost regarding recording of hadith so as we mentioned so so, <coughs> so they became the ulama that kind of somewhat established regarding concerning uh, or were heavily involved in regarding the tadween regarding the recording of the hadith of the prophet alayhi salam and also the athar and also regarding uh, verification regarding hadith being authentic or not so also they were involved in this heavily also the, uh, the checking critiquing of the men were the narrators so they became the one who was the forefront regarding this particular uh, regarding ilm al hadith and its related sciences so as for the usul so next regarding the usul of ayl al hadith fi bayan al ahkam so regarding concern next matter what's the the usul that ayl hadith the, uh, the approach of Ali Hadith regarding Bayan al-Ahkam. So as for them concerned the Ali Hadith that the emphasis for them regarding the Quran. So the primary emphasis was regarding the Quran that a person was to take uh, so the, the primary emphasis was regarding the Quran and also then the Sunnah and giving clarity matters either mention the Quran or not mention in the Quran 
So look into the Sunnah as a primary source. Also regarding concern the Sunnah with Al Hadith that did not they did not make a distinction regarding in matters of fiqh regarding a hadith that is said to be mustafida or hadith mutawatir or hadith to ahad. They do not per se make that distinction. As for them, is that the authenticity of the hadith, where the hadith is narrated by a few or narrated by many, then that per se did not uh, impact on them accepting the hadith and acting upon it and taking rulings from the hadith. <coughs> so for them, if the hadith is authenticated, then it is to be followed. If the hadith is authenticated, then it is to be followed also regarding concerning that uh, of them is regarding concern that also that they rely also uh, the ta um, that uh, uh, that generation regarding concerning taken from the the aqwal of the, the sahaba wa at tabiin al kibar so also taken from the aqwal and the fatawa from the kibar as sahaba if there's no evidence that is found from quran the sunnah then also they look to the aqwal of the sahaba and also that of the the tabiin of those who preceded them <coughs> So, and if they found concerned Akwal of the, the Sahaba and Tabi'een that they were all in agreement on a matter, then that will take precedent. If there's an agreement between the Sahaba or the, the Tabi'een on a matter, then that will be, that will take precedent. And if there's a matter that they disagree, so a matter that they disagree on uh, regarding concerning the Sahaba or the Tabi'een, then they would look to, they will look into that matter and uh, take the view that they believe it is closest to the Haq. They will take that, the, the view that they believe it is closest to the source. Or that person, maybe Arra, that a person that is more, very more conservative regarding his view, or that uh, the fact that the person also the, the ones in the ratings, or that view that seem to have more depth, the people were more accurate, uh, so they kind of somewhat, or the view that was more uh, ishtahar, that view that was more predominantly followed, so they kind of somewhat use these as ways if there's a difference between the, the Sahaba and the Tabi'een, that they'd use these things as a way to, uh, <coughs> uh, uh, to uh, as a means to, uh, take one of those views. So they use these things as a scale to measure which view to be taken by way of see concerning that if the view taken by at time the Jumhur amongst them the Khulafa or the Jumhur of the Fuqaha also regarding concerning that uh, the one concerned that in matters of the, uh, disagreement regarding the matter concerning who said to be Alam Bil Ilm Hadith and the likes those who are said to be more conservative those who are said concerned act or adopt those who are said to be more precise regarding their memory, their recording of the hadith or the matters, or the view that is more uh, known and established, the view that is more established. So these are the things that they try to use regarding, and they will not try to go outside the views that are already had by the, those who preceded them, not to go outside, go out of the views that were already established. But also they use also, uh, the other tools regarding to come to conclusions, that's concerning the first uh, the first madaris, which is uh, the madrasa of Ali al-Hadith. Then uh, the next madrasa that was established concerning the madrasa Ali al-Rahi. So the next madrasa, madrasa Ali al-Rahi. So that's concerning that uh, Ali al-Rahi, that uh, what is intended, so what is intended by Ali al-Rahi, they mentioned regarding Ali al-Rahi, that uh, <coughs> uh, as mentioned here by Sheikh uh, al-Ashkar, he mentioned al-Murad bil Ahli rahi or bi rahi murad bi rahi al ilmu bi shay ala sabil al dhan al ilm bi shay ala sabil al dhan so i mentioned that that's what the person will take a view of a matter but is based upon dhan the person not fully convinced but take a view that it is based upon dhan uh, or full conviction or not from full conviction and the ulama of the they discuss concerning what is said to be a rahi فَقَدْ قَصَّ الْفُقَهَا So al-fuqaha, that they kind of somewhat deem al-rahi to be another to the person that can investigate, look into matters اِعْمَالْ الْفِكْرِ فِي الْوَقَاعِ أَلَّتِي لَمْ يَرُدْ بِهَا النَّسِ And also the person can somewhat to look and to look into matters uh, where there is no clear text or where there is no text uh, So that's the approach that they saw as being al-rahi And also rahi also, also to understood concerning you know, that uh, كثير ما استعمل الصحابة كلمة الرحي في الاجتهاداتهم. So regarding concern the Sahaba, they use the word الرحي regarding اجتهادات. So the word الرحي at times could mean اجتهادات based upon certain principles that are followed by that Imam. But also the word الرحي also start to undertake the meaning concerning that the person then take on the meaning of being as mentioned that مرابي أهل الرحي الذين أكثروا من استعمال الرحي والكياس. 
في بيان أحكام الشرعية. So later on, I want to tap the, the, the meaning of the word of, uh, of Rahi, then start, take on the meaning concerning that those of the ulama who start to use a lot regarding or rely a lot in the use of Rahi by way of Qiyas analogy in Bayan Ahkamu Sharia, in clarifying or coming to Islamic ruling. So they start to use a lot of Qiyas in how they will come to their uh, judgments on matters regarding Islam. But also, for one to take into consideration, it does not mean that they completely ignore Al Quran and Sunnah. This is not to be understood or be to be taken in that fa in that way. So it's not to be taken a light that they completely ignore Al Quran and Sunnah. That is not the case. But as mentioned, that they would go, uh, they would discuss, use uh, Qiyas uh, a lot regarding uh, certain matters. So it is mentioned by uh, Shah Rastani. So Shah Rastani. When he discussed concerning Man um uh, al I mentioned Um al Iraq, al Rahi, he mentioned Ashab al Rahi, that he mentioned Hum Ashab Um al Iraq, they are the people of Iraq. Ashab Iraq meaning Ashab Abu Anifa, the companions of Abu Anifa, and Nu'man ibn Thabit, that's Abu Anifa, and Ashabihi, and from his companions, Muhammad ibn Hassan, so also of his students and those of his companions, Muhammad ibn Hassan, Abu Yusuf, Yaqub ibn Ibrahim ibn Muhammad al-Qadi So also Abu Yusuf Yaqub ibn Ibrahim ibn Muhammad al-Qadi Was Zufr ibn Hudayl Was Zufr ibn Hudayl And then he mentioned Wal-Hassan al-Hassan ibn Ziyad al-Lu'lawi Al-Hassan ibn Ziyad al-Lu'lawi So these are the ones who became like that The one who represent the ulama Who represents the matter of al Rahi. So it start they mention it concerning at that time then Abu Anifa of those who start to represent that uh, that method and also his main students and companions and he mentioned uh, Muhammad ibn Hassan al Shaybani Abu Yusuf Zufur and al Hassan ibn Ziyad al Lulawi so those are the ones who were considered to be the ones who then represent Al Rahi in that from that era onwards from that era onwards they are the ones who uh, represent Al Rahi. Also, with the next with Al Rahi, that uh, they are said to be of Al Rahi based upon concern to Inayatuhum bi tahsil al wedj al qiyas. That they kind of somewhat go in, in go, go in depth regarding the use or go uh, they use the use of qiyas a lot. That they use of qiyas a lot. So the using of qiyas by them was used uh, a lot, and uh, regarding concerning matters. Uh, so with qiyas, uh, so and at times that. Uh, um, at times that they will have uh, they'll use qiyas over that of a hadith of, of some of the hadith so at times they will give precedent to qiyas over that of a hadith let's say a hadith uh, a hadith uh, a, a, a hadith a had so at times they will give uh, qiyas they'll use their qiyas they give qiyas over that of their of that of the hadith so those are the things that they became known for where at times they will give precedent to qiyas over that of some of the hadith some are some hadith. So they mentioned regarding so that uh, so that uh, madrasa became known regarding that uh, uh, they went uh, the use of kias and also of those things concerning that that uh, they also the masal for the they say if the we concerned that they would assume things if this was to happen so they have a discussion uh, if this was to happen then what would be the ruling so can somewhat make things up and then try to find a rulings to those issues that they have somewhat uh, assumed or have made up so that becomes of the thing that they become and a lot of uh, uh, discussion regarding these type of uh, issues regarding if this was to occur then what's the answer for this they kind of somewhat uh, uh, go into things so things that did not occur so al hadith was not per se uh, of those who like to enter into things that were haven't yet occurred uh, and but uh, al rahi they kind of somewhat would delve into those matters also, you find that some of the ulama, because that's an ulama also of look at Al in discussing this method or this approach of them, Ibn Qayyim Rahimullah, in his book, Alam al Muaqeen, that can somewhat, he can have some observation regarding this approach. So, he has some observation regarding this approach. So, Al Hadith, that the approach was still very much in line with that of the Sahaba. So, Al Hadith, that they can somewhat still follow the system that was in place by the people of the, the ulama of Medina, starting from the time of the Sahaba, 
after the Prophet ﷺ, and uh, and the generation that follow them. So it can somewhat still held to that principle of the Sahaba regarding reliance upon Hadith or Quran, uh, and less use of things of uh, al qiyas uh, unless needed to. But uh, uh, so that's concerning of those things. But with Ayatul Rahi, that they can somewhat more start to indulge and op uh, uh, open it, uh, that indulge more into things regarding al qiyas and regarding at times that they will put precedent to qiyas or that of Hadith. Uh, in some matters, so even Khayyim Rahimullah in uh, reviewing regarding this uh, the matter of Ayatul Rahi that uh, you have mentioned certain points that uh, and of those type of matters and observation that he has stated regarding uh, Ayatul Rahi, he mentioned one concerning that ظنهم قصور النصوص and بيان جميع الحوادث. So kind of somewhat they had an approach regarding that. They kind of somewhat had the perception that uh, the nusus was somewhat restricted. No, it's not uh, sufficient in clarifying uh, a lot of hawadis, things that were occurring. So they believe that another the nusus that was already established, it was not sufficient enough to clarify uh, things that were occurring uh, during that time. So uh, they went into al -Qiyas type of thing. They went into use of qiyas due to this, believing that the they thought, they thought that the source was not sufficient enough to cover all the things that was occurring then. So there was, you uh, have those matters. Also, he mentioned second, Mu'aratu Kathir min al-Nusus bil Rahi wal Qiyas. Also, you find with the matter of Al Rahi, there are times that you find that uh, their uh, opinions would, uh, they'll give their opinions over that of the text. At times, they would forth, uh, uh, put their opinions before that of the text. So it does occur. So you mentioned uh, these things, they have occurred regarding uh, some matters. I even find that so, and he mentioned some of those matters. And also, third point that he mentioned regarding concerning اتقادهم في كثير من أحكام الشرعية أنها على خلاف القياس. So also he mentioned that they also, al Rahi also believe in concern that, you know, in many matters concerning that, you know, that أحكام uh, الشرعية that it goes against concerning that أنها على خلاف القياس that is opposition to قياس. Uh, so that's concerned. So that's a procession that they are a procession, a procession, procession that the pro a view that they had that was uh, contrary. So this procession that they have was khilaf a text. Uh, so that's something that he mentioned regarding Ali. Uh, uh, we find a certain thing that they might somewhat with uh, uh, not is fall uh, then uh, that hey, they can somewhat uh, add that approach regarding. I said extensive use of khilaf, of, of qiyas, extensive use of qiyas. So that's concerning those two main madaris, or the two main ones that were established. Then I mentioned it, uh, they have mentioned there's a third, a third one that was mentioned, which is concerning madrasat ailil al zahir So al ailil al zahiriyah became now a third madrasa became also established. So the two prominent ones, the two more famous, was those two, but then also there was a third that also <coughs> was established. So as for the third, <coughs> they mentioned regarding concern that you know concerned to refer to as Madrasa Ali al Zahir, Madrasatu Al Zahir. And uh Al Zahiriya that uh, who is intended I mean, Madrasa, it turns out it goes like um, it was the that goes in opposition to that of Al Rahi. So the Madrasa can somewhat in opposition to that of Al Rahi. Uh, by way of uh, Al Rahi went into they saw they they saw that they went too much into things regarding al rahi wal qiyas and ali rahi and ali zahir was in opposition to al qiyas so ali uh, ali zahir there was in total opposition to qiyas without concern that there, there's no qiyas that they do not per se accept qiyas as a method so they have a complete rejection of qiyas that becomes of the uh, the two opposing approach where ali zahir in opposing ali rahi that they can somewhat totally neglect concerning al qiyas regarding akamu sharia. This method of al rahi it is uh, attributed. It is attributed. Uh, it is attributed to Dawood ibn Ali ibn Khalaf al-Asbahani. So Dawood ibn Ali ibn Khalaf al-Asbahani. Al-Asli also is from Kufa, birth, born in Kufa. Baghdadi Dar lived in Baghdad and he's more renowned as 
Dawood al Zahiri. He is more renowned as Dawood al Zahiri. And he was born like in the, the year uh, uh, 200 al Hijri. So the year 200 al Hijri was when he uh, was born. And uh, he died the year 270. The 270 al Hijri. He died. So that was concerning Dawood al Zahiri. So Dawood al Zahiri, rahimullah, that he tafaqqa, that he can somewhat, he studied the lives of uh, uh, <coughs> Abi Thur. Who one of the students of um, Imam, uh, one of the students of uh, Imam Shafi, he started with Ishaq ibn Rahuya, Imam Al Hadith, also, uh, and others that he studied with. So he kind of somewhat was more inclined towards the method, uh, 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 the way of Al Hadith, but then kind of somewhat in response to the uh, Al Rahi, he kind of somewhat reject. Al -qiyas. So of the thing that they mentioned, you know, that they believe that the Zahiriya, that one must owe only to the text and to the Zahir meaning of the text. So to the apparent meaning of the text, then that's what one should owe to. That's concerning the approach of the, the Zahiriya and also Al Ijma. So regarding concerns, they all as the, the, the sources to be followed, that one <coughs> followed by way of the text, meaning Quran, the Sunnah, from its apparent meaning, whatever apparent meaning that it is, one is to follow. And also Al Ijma. And also, that comes from Ismail the Salaf, according to from that time, Ismail to the Sahaba. And also, they completely negate concerning uh, matters concerning Al Qiyas. They negate concerning that there is no Qiyas, that one is not to use this as a system regarding uh, Ahkam al Sharia. And also, they said that with Ahkam, that there's no, there's no Ta'leel, there's no concept, no, that there's no Hikmah, there's no reason, reasoning behind the Ahkam, the, the, the uh, Ahkam al Sharia. So, they can somewhat went on that. Uh, add that approach, so they add this approach. But uh, so that's concerning in rough, in brief regarding matters uh, regarding the matter of the zahiriya, the matter of the the zahiriya. Of those matter, so said that the akhtar that they fell into, that they were a bit excessive regarding complete negation of kias. Also, second, that uh, have an approach regarding that one should only take the zahir, the apparent meaning of the text of the Quran, the Sunnah. Also, it was a bit uh, the ulama also. Uh, clarify that is an incorrect approach that uh, to have that Zahir approach in all matters regarding the text then that's the, not the correct approach so they kind of somewhat highlighted those type of things uh, also they kind of all regarding concern this matter that the Zahir also approach concerning that uh, they believe concern Uqud al muslimin that regarding concern that the Muslim concerning you know, uh, uh, transactions and uh, their shurut, all these things, the asl that it is something which is, so things of mu'amalat, the asl for them is something which is batil until you have a, a proof to say otherwise. So you can somewhat approach thing regarding that, the general matters of the Muslim, it is haram, general affairs is haram, until there's evidence to say it is allowed. So that's concerning that approach that the have was contrary to the view of majority of the ulama. So you find that the, so that's concerning of those things that was noted regarding the matter of the zahiriyah. So that's the method of the, the Zahiriyya. So as for that method of Zahiriyya, it's a matter that it's of the, as we'll discuss, of those methods that still exist up until today. The followers are very few in numbers to note, to my knowledge, that uh, a few people, uh, of those, the more well-known individual who are said to be of Zahiriyya, I've said of our time, of recent time, both those uh, are two individuals that both have passed away. One is referred to as uh, Abu Abdul Rahman ibn Aqil al Zahiri. So Abu Abdul Rahman ibn Aqil al Zahiri. And also that uh, from the area of Saudi Arabia. And also, second, a person, another sheikh called a sheikh, Abu Turab al Zahiri. So Abu Turab al Zahiri, that originally from Hind and then migrated to Saudi and then uh, lived in Saudi Arabia and uh, in Mecca where he died uh, years ago, uh, 2002, he died. 2002. So those are the, of the more famous ones of our era that is said to be all uh, openly uh, aligned to the method of the Zahiriya. So, uh, and uh, Abu Turab al Zahiri is Ali ibn Muhammad Abdul Haq al Hashimi. So he said to be of the method of the or of Zahiri. So those are the two Madaris, uh, or the three Madaris that can kind of somewhat. Uh, were established or said, you know, during that time. So that's concerned the start of the development of the Madahib al fiqiyah that are, became well known. 
So of the things that they discuss concerning the development of these madhahib. So as these madhahib, so these now become that yeah, the institutions or the places, the madaris, the institution regarding learning, then from this develop the actual now madhahib. And as we know concerning the ulama, they mentioned that uh, <coughs> they discussed and we discussed concerning the, what is said to be a in this concern concerning madhahib and their development, what is the tarif a madhahib? So what is concerned al madhahib or madhab? So nashat al madhahib and how they became established, then that's the next discussion of the madhahib al fiqhiyya that we know today exist and how they came into being. So we're going concerning al madhab. So you have the madhab or the plural madhahib that uh, it starts in the time of the tabi'een, as we mentioned. The time of uh, in the time of the the tabi'een. <coughs> As for the definition of al mathab that uh, they mention mathab huwa ma ikhtaruhu imam al mujtahid. So it's the view taken by an imam al mujtahid. So it's the view that is taken a position, a view taken by an imam al mujtahid. Wa yadhab ilayhi min akam. The view that he has all to regarding matters that relate to akam fi masail al ijtihadiyah. In matters of ijtihadiyah, so it's the view, a position taken by one of the, uh, uh, an imam who is a mujtahid and he has taken a certain position in a matter that relates to ahkam al sharia ijtihadiyah, that it is allowed for ijtihad, that there is room for ijtihad. So as for as concerning uh, what is referred to as a, a Mathab The ones we have the madhahib that we have the madhahib that we have that they can the ulama have classed them into two types So the ulama put them into two categories regarding the madhahib uh, And we'll explain certain things about the madhahib later furthermore, but as for the madhahib they have classed into two types into two categories or the first of those madhahib that they mention we consider madhahib al fiqhiyya al baqiyah so madhahib al fiqhiyya that existed then and still remain that they started then and they still exist up until today so you have al madhahib al fiqhiyya al baqiyah ila yawm <coughs> up until today and of those madhahib that still exist started from then in the time of the tabi'een and still exists until today we have one the madhahib of abu anifa so the madhahib of imam abi anifa Second, Imam Al-Malik. Third, Imam Al-Shafi'i. Fourth, Imam Ahmed bin Hanbal. And one can add, those are the four that are more renowned and followed by, mo by many. And one can add a fifth, which is the Mathab al-Zahiriya, because their book still exists, but their following is very, very small. So the following of the Zahiriya, very, very small. But they still have books that explain their Mathab up until today, and as we'll discuss those. Uh, so regarding consider of those matters that existed and still exist until today, then uh, they mentioned that you have a second set of madhahib, that uh, a second group of madhahib that I mentioned concerned that, you know, those ones that, so you have Abu Anifa, who mentioned the matter of Imam Abu Anifa, rahimahullah, and he died, Imam Abu Anifa, uh, 150 Al-Hijri, second, Mathab Imam Malik ibn Anas, he died 179 Al Hijri. Mathab Imam Muhammad ibn Idris al Shafi'i, who died 204 Al Hijri, 204 Hijri. And the fourth is the Mathab of Imam Ahmed ibn Hanbal, who died 241. So Ahmed, 241, Shafi, 204, Imam Malik, 179, and Imam Abi Anifa, Rahimahumullah, 150. So those are concerning the, the madhahib that still remain today. Then we have a second group of madhahib are the ones that can somewhat, they mention madhahib mundathara. Madhahib mundathara. Mundathara that they exist but they don't exist today. So they can somewhat, they faded out. Uh, so they faded away as a madhahib, a fully established, followed madhahib. Those one, these ones can somewhat, they faded away. Some of their views of these ayyma are they still exist but not in full, not as the uh, the other madhahib and also the other madhahib that as they became established, they have uh, ulama who uh, supported that madhab 
who wrote of that Masab uh, and uh, the likes. Also of Usul, of books of all types that relate to these Mazahib. So you have books that support the Mazahib, these four, and also you have ulama who support these Mazahib, and even state that support these four, these four Mazahib. So that's why they still, uh, so these are the ones that still remain. Uh, the other ones, that the, the other set, the other Mazahib they mention, and Mazahib Mundathara. What are those one Mundathara? They mention of those ones that you have one, the Mathab of Abdullah ibn Shubrama. Abdullah ibn Shubrama, who died 144. Died 144, and he's from Fil Yemen, Thumma Kufa. So he was from Yemen, then from Kufa. So that Mathab ibn Shubrama, that uh, one of the ulama of the Fuqaha, but his Mathab doesn't per se uh, still exists intact fully. But his aqwal still are mentioned here and there in the books of the Fuqaha. Also, the second of those Mazahi that existed and does not exist intact, the Mathab of Muhammad II, Muhammad ibn Abdul Rahman, Muhammad ibn Abdul Rahman ibn Abi Layla. So, Muhammad ibn Abdul Rahman ibn Abi Layla. And he died, of, he died in Kufa in the year 148. The year 148. So these ones preceded the, uh, the four that we mentioned before, the four that exist, uh, Shubrama, Ibn Abi Layla, they preceded them as they died before. Then of those, uh, also the third of those Mazahib that are mentioned, the Mazahib of Abdul Rahman Ibn Amr al Awza'i. Abdul Rahman Ibn Amr al Awza'i. So Imam al Awza'i. And from the ulama uh, of uh, mention, that the Mathab was somewhat in Sham, also it was in Maghrib and also in Andalus. So the Mathab of Awzahi. <coughs> also that Mathab, the, the fourth of those Mathahib that I mentioned is the Mathab of Sufyan al Thori. Sufyan al Thori, who died 161. Who died 161. So far, Khufa and Khurasan. So that Mathab was in Kufa wal Khurasan. The fifth Mathab of Late Ibn Sa'd. Late Ibn Sa'd. Al Fahmi. So Late Ibn Sa'd. Of the ulama of, of, the, of Misr. Of Al Misr. Of Egypt, Cairo. The sixth of those Mazahib that doesn't exist but existed before. The Mathab is Al Shariq ibn Abdullah and Nakhai. Shariq ibn Abdullah. And he died 177. 177. And the matter concerning of, uh, of uh, was in Kufa, well, Ahwaz. In Kufa and then Ahwaz. Or also next of those Madahib, so Kufa uh, well, well, Ahwaz. Then the next, the seventh of those Madahib, that of uh, the one of Sufyan ibn Uyayna. Sufyan ibn Uyayna. And that of Al Mecca. So he was of Mecca. And Sufyan ibn Uyayna, that he died 198. Died 198. The next, the eighth of those Mazahib is the Mazahib of Ishaq ibn Rahu, wa, Rahuya. Ishaq ibn Rahuya, or some mention Rahawai, but the ulama of Hadith mention, as I mentioned, Ishaq ibn Rahuya. So Ishaq ibn Rahuya, and that of Naysabur. And he died two. 38 that year 238 so Ishaq ibn Rahuya 238 fi Naysabur then the ninth of those Mazahib that exist is the Mazahib of Abi Thor Ibrahim ibn Khalid al Kelbi Ibrahim uh, Abu Thor Ibrahim ibn Khalid al, uh, al Kelbi fi Baghdad wa and other places so in fi Baghdad and other places so Ibn Abu Thur The tent of those Mazahib The one of Dawood ibn Ali Asbahani Dawood ibn Ali Al-Asbahani Al-Zahiri Who died uh, 270 Who died 270 Al-Hijri And that was in Baghdad And also Khurasan That Al-Mazhab And also in uh, Maghrib Al-Andalus so uh, that matter also, it uh, could be found in Baghdad, Khorasan, Maghrib, and Andalus. 
Then also the 11th of those madhahib is the madhab of Muhammad ibn Jarir al-Tabari. Muhammad ibn Jarir al-Tabari who died 310, who died 310 al-Hijri. And it was in, he was in, his matter was in Baghdad. So Muhammad ibn Jarir al-Tabari was the Mufassir. So Muhammad ibn Jarir al-Tabari was the one who of the famous book in Tafsir. Then the last, the twelfth of those is the method of Muhammad ibn Khuzayma. Muhammad ibn Khuzayma. That was in Naysabur. So Muhammad ibn Khuzayma in Naysabur and he died 311. 311 Hijri. So these are the madhahib that uh, existed alongside those other madhahib. But uh, the other four, these ones, they died out. The aqwal of these, some of these ulama, they still exist, but not in full contact or not full as in the other madhahib. So uh, we won't go through each of uh, this. Uh, some I've mentioned, like you know, each of uh, uh, something brief on each of those ayyimah. But uh, we just mentioned that you know these are those madhahib that uh, existed then, uh, but also, but then eventually that uh, they did not per se uh, continue and survive of the thing that transferred that uh, so uh, could be for various reasons. But these madhahib did not per se uh, so uh, continue until today, fully intact. Then we we'll discuss concerning the four that we mentioned first, the method of Imam uh, Abu Anifa, Imam Malik, Imam Shafi, and the four being that of Ahmed uh, of uh, the Hamba, uh, uh, Imam Ahmed Rahimahumullah Jamian, that uh, why these ones survive. So reason behind why these four somewhat uh, survive compared to the others. That's it in full talk, in a full uh, 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 survived. That they mentioned regarding concerning one concerning their students. That we're going to say their students, so one of those four, that their students were the one who kind of somewhat helped to preserve that uh, their method. So those students were the one who still can somewhat that, that uh, uh, at times. So uh, yes, so it, those students that uh, recorded the aqwal of the of those uh, of their sheikh and still kept that uh, method alive. So by way of the the students, so they were record of the aqwal of their ulama of those uh, of their teacher and then they'll spread this information and they'll establish their method and they'll make it jihad based upon that method based upon the principle of their the their teacher so the sub those students are the ones who help to keep that method alive so the students helping to keep that method alive as mentioned by imam shafi rahimullah as i said concerned you know that uh come uh, call imam shafi rahimullah and later bin sad Rahimahullah, a late Afqa min Malik. Imam Shafi Rahimahullah mentioned that late, yeah, late Ibn Sa'd, Afqa min Shafi, that you know is more Afqa min Shafi, more Najibla a Shafi. Illa an ashabuhu, except that his student, Lam Yakawimu bi. But Lam Yakumu bihi. But his student did not per se help to establish him. Lam Yakumu bihi. That his students, they did not per se help to make his method survive. So because somewhat they didn't record didn't uh, record of the, the view of their sheikh, so it kind of somewhat, it uh, did, was not preserved. Second of the reason concern, I know that uh, a second reason why some of these uh, madhahib, these ones, they survive, that at times, yabanna al dawla al madhahib you find that different, different state, that they kind of somewhat, that the, uh, they took a particular madhahib being the original madhahib of the state. So regarding concern, that so each, uh, each state, each country, that they might align and adopt uh, one of those method to be the original uh, to be the official method of the state so a country or a state taking one of those method to be the original method of the state so we're going to concern it so it become the the method of the of the state so it will mean that concern that you know that uh, uh, it will kind of somewhat aid and support that method in the schools it will be taught in the court outs it will be used that in the message it will be taught so because of the state taking that method as the official method of the state. So you might find that even today, 
time in today that you find that each of the Muslim state or country that they all that they all um, align to a particular. As I said, that the, the state will align to follow a particular method. So the state will adopt or follow a particular method. We find that the courts and the schools that they will use the books of that method as a way of to teach and also regarding matters concerning al uh appointing judges. So that still exists until today. So you find that the matter of Abu Anifa somewhat spread uh, because of his students taking like, that said taking off roles of being cover uh, being judges. So that, for example, Abu Yusuf also regarding concern that he became the head judge. So the matter of Abu Anifa kind of somewhat was uh, uh, used. Also, you find that the state also adapted that method, so it became the method of the state. You find, for example, of today's time. Like uh, why I find many of the Muslims are of the method of the of the Hanafiya because in terms of Uthman, the the Ottoman uh, Empire, the Ottoman uh, Empire, that they were when they were in charge, that the official method was the method of Abu Anifa. So the state that they govern, the region they govern, it will be ruled by the the method of Abu Anifa or the that method. Also, a third thing concerning that uh, establishment of the Madaris Mathabiya. So you find that you know each. Madrasa, schools, institution start also to adopt a particular method. So each school, institution start to adopt a particular method. So that will be taught in their syllabus. So that's how the method that they still survive and that also still exists today. And also by way of said, no, the student by example, uh, uh, also being taught in Masajid. That, uh, uh, so those are the things that help some of those Mazaib from, uh, help those Mazaib to survive and to continue. So you find different madaris so they established you different different times and each of them adopted a particular method so you find that whatever student they were that they produce that they will follow that particular method because they were taught that particular method and also awqaf ala arbab al-madhahib and also you find also awqaf like endowment 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 to madhahib so you find that a person might leave money or invest in a particular method. So people investing in a particular method regarding that the students of that. Uh, so people in, in, uh, investing in a particular method. So also that also help. Like and and in today's time, you find concern this type of uh, awqaf endowment that also concern that you might find that institution that uh, are uh, that may more concentrate on a particular method regarding the producing of their works on their books. So you find that certain institutions. Or publishers that they will produce books of a particular method, so it's kind of somewhat help that method to stay alive. The next matter is regarding concerning hukum tamazub. So before we go concerning the hukum of tamazub, for one to understand what we mentioned regarding concerning what is a method. So the method, as we mentioned regarding that uh, method, huwa ma ikhtaruhu imam mujtahid. So the view taken by Imam Mujtahid. We yathab ilayhi min ahkam fi masahil al-ijtihadiyya. And also the, the, the position that he have taken regarding masahil al-ijtihadiyya. So the ulama have clarified regarding concerning from that explanation. It can somewhat understand regarding concerning that uh, al-mathab. Uh, also could be explained regarding concerning you know, that uh, it's a manhaj, a, a, a system that is followed regarding uh, fiqh, a system, a method that is used in approach the study of fiqh. So, a matter concerning manja al fiqhiyya is a person mujtahid, that a person for a particular way regarding his approach regarding study of fiqh. So as for those matters who said no fiqh, they said no, these matters concerning, as I mentioned all about it, that these matters concerning uh, masal ishtihadiyya. So meaning concerning that, you know, uh, the method is in relation to matter that is ishtihadiyya. So matter that are non ishtihadiyya, then it is not included. So matter regarding ijma, that not be said to be a matter of a method, because in the ijma. So a matter which is within ijma, then it is not particular to a particular method. Also, matters said to be akadiyah will not be included concerning matters of uh, concerning matters of fiqh. So, matters concerning itikad will not be included in concerning matter that is at, uh, that is attached to a particular method. Also, they discuss concerning matters uh, 
that, uh, that are very clear cut. So, for example, a person wouldn't say in matters that you know, that there is le, so it's only so a matter that is very clear cut regarding concern that you would say the matter of the anafia is that Som Shah Ramadan. One would not say that. Nam or a matter regarding concern that you know, the matter of the Hanabila is that Dhuhr is Arba Rakat. You would not say that because those things are established and not open for discussion or ijtihad. So those matters that are somewhat um, of that type. So the matters concerning what I refer to as uh, Mathabiya is regarding those matters that goes to said uh, Majalil Ijtihad. Matters that are open to Ijtihad, those, or those topics or those uh, matters that it is open for an alim to make Ijtihad regarding concerning certain matters, but those things that are agreed upon, and it's, uh, then there's no Ijtihad, there's no Mathab on those matters. There's no particular Mathab that is attached to those matters. So you wouldn't. Uh, so one wouldn't. Uh, so that's concerning those matters. Also with the mazahib, that one to be mindful of concern that not not everything that is attributed to a mazhab is from the mazhab, or to the imam. Not everything that is said to be from the mazhab is actually the view of the imam of the mazhab or the founder of the mazhab. So find the founder, Abu Anifa, Malik, Shafi, Ahmed al Hanbal. Not everything that is att attributed to the mazhab of the Hanabila the Shafi'iyah, the Malikiyah, or the Ahnaf, that it goes back to the actual founder of the Mathab. So there's things that have been added to the Mathab that was not the actual original view of the, of the Imam. So those things occur, uh, or want to be mindful of those things. Also, those, all those mathahib, original concern, I even of those mathahib, that they all forbid regarding concerning that, ta'asub, to any of them, or to any person, themselves, or any other person. So all their imma al arba. Imam Abu Anifa, Imam Shafi, Imam Malik, Imam Ahmed, that they all kind of somewhat, that uh, spoke against people having ta'asub to them or to anyone else. Also, they were for, they were against concerning a person and someone you know, putting their view before that of the clear evidence. So regarding the Quran, the Sunnah, what ijma that they were against concerning that uh, their views are giving uh, are, are taking precedent, giving precedent over the text. And also, they disencourage regarding taqlid. They they they, they they disencourage regarding people blind following them on things, but for the person to look to see. What's the evidence that they put forward regarding the view that they have taken and for the person to follow the evidence. So for the person to follow the evidence, uh, so those are the things that they were uh, against those things. So they were against concerning taqlid. They were against concerning the person putting their views before that of the text. Also, uh, the text concerning the Quran, the Sunnah. Also, they were against concerning ta'asub, a person having not this fa uh, being fanatic towards them. Also, for the person that uh, not to... Uh, to be disrespectful towards any other imam. So they were totally against these type of things, so to be respectful to all the imma, uh, but not to go overboard regarding placing their views above that of the text and having ta'asub towards them or making taqlid of their views. So they were against these type of things. So as for the time of those aima, that uh, so as for those tamatha regarding concerning that uh, the next matter regarding the hukum tamathub. So the person who wants to follow a matter was the hukum regarding tamathub. So tamathub bi anahu ilzam ghayr al mujtahid mathab mujtahid ma'ayin fi usul wal furu aw fi ahdihima. So what is meant by tamathub that could be explained as being iltizam ghayr al mujtahid is for a person to force. A person who is not a mujtahid, the mathab, the view of a, an imam who is a mujtahid, so a person who is not a mujtahid, being forced to <coughs> follow, take the mathab of a person who is a mujtahid in matters regarding for, uh, the usul and the furu, 
or one of both. So again, the meaning concerned of the person, al-ma'tamathub, is a person who align himself, a person who's a, a general a person aligning himself to an imam who's a mujtahid, and following this and sticking to this, holding to this, so holding to an, uh, <coughs> to an imam on matters regarding usul al furu <coughs> so meaning concern that you know and this could be explained or this can be uh, this is a different from surah different different ways regarding this concern and yaltazim al mubtadi so a person who is a a beginner fil fiqh in tafaqu ahad al madhahib al fiqhiyah al arba so a person going to somewhat so in that case that a person that you know is a beginner regarding studying of fiqh that is being somewhat uh, the person that uh, is being somewhat uh, restricted to follow one of the madhahib al fiqhiyah one of the madhahib. Uh, <coughs> so they mention concern itself, that concern So You might have cases like those. You have those cases concerned. It's not a person by way of study. So the person is concerned, he's using another way of study regarding one of the madhahib, where the person is not, is not know the masail that are being discussed, know the evidence, and if uh, whatever, and if the evidence is against the view of the mathab, then he goes with the evidence, and that's not a problem, then that is what is expected, then that is what is expected for the person, so the, the books of the fuqaha is just a syllabus to help the person to study, but not for the person to hold or to believe everything in those books, it is taught, it is absolutely correct, so for the person to understand that, the imam and what is in these books, there's things that may be incorrect based upon this ev other evidence to prove otherwise. So the person can somewhat, so the person will use those books as a way to, as a, as a study syllabus. So it'll be used as a study syllabus for the person to understand regarding the masai that are being discussed and also the evidence for them. And uh, if the evidence coincide with the view of the imam, then it is taken. If it goes against the, view, the, the evidence against the imam, then the person goes with the, the evidence. So the way of using a method to study fiqh <coughs> as a way of a like a syllabus, then that's not there, that's not, then that is somewhat there's no harm in this. There's no harm in this. The uh, They mention regarding concern, the next case they mention concern to know that for a person mutakadim fil ilm, that he may hold to a particular method regarding concerning ilm wal fatawa, uh, where the person will you concern is with that to the person, but he would uh, but he would lean, he will follow the leal if it goes against the method in matter concerning fatawa and in uh, in fatawa and action, if the person gonna somewhat use a method and whatever also the and the coincide. Then he applies. What doesn't he leave? Then also, this is something which is even for the person who taught them, not for the person of beginner, but the person who have studied. Then the same thing apply. It is allowed. It is something which is allowed for the person that to still uh, look to the method. What coincide in the method with the haq, with the leel, It is followed and taken. And those things that does not coincide with the leel from the method, then the person he leaves it. So even for the person, so even the person who's advanced, the person who give fatawa, he can take that path. He can take that approach. So the person also uh, can take that approach for the person who have studied and advanced in his studied. Also, he can take this approach. And that's a matter of the jumhur of the ulama. That's a matter of the the jumhur of the the ulama is of that position. So that's concerning the madhahib regarding uh, so these madhahib that uh, they have somewhat survived and we discussed since then, that you have that uh, the ulama who have uh, wrote books in explaining those madhahib and in clarifying those madhahib uh, so you find that many works have been done also those madhahib 
You have books in Usul al-Fiqh regarding the method, regarding all those madhahib approach concerning al-Fiqh, uh, regarding that uh, the approach regarding how to extract ruling. So you have everything that's have a system, a full system in place regarding those madhahib. And some of those things we'll discuss regarding concerning that uh, the usul of each of those imam in general. Uh, so those things to be uh, covered regarding each uh, of those four madhahib regarding of uh, something brief. So we'll be discussing in brief regarding just have a uh, general oversight regarding each of those madhahib of those things that uh, the usul of each of those uh, imma of the four madhahib. So the next discussion will be concerning matters relating to a brief biography of each of those imma and also their usul and also some of the uh, renowned books that uh, are written on that on for each mathab. So some of the, more, the, uh, the main sources regarding books on that particular mathab. So that will be of the next thing to be covered regarding the development of fiqh and then uh, we'll discuss after then regarding uh, matters uh, fiqh after the imma, fiqh after the, the imma. So that's concerning uh, today's uh, session regarding as we are going to concern this topic concerning tariq al-fiqh, the history of fiqh and regarding how it develops, the development of fiqh or the evolution of fiqh from the time of the Prophet Islam up until uh, contemporary times regarding how it has developed uh, regarding concerning fiqh. So we have gone through the period concerning Ahd al the time of the Prophet Islam, also after then the Sahaba, then after then we discuss concerning the Kibar al-Tabi'een and then discuss concerning the Madhahib al-Arba and others, how they came into exist, how they came into being as uh, Madaris and how they and uh, how they themselves also have developed and also within those how they have developed. So that insha'Allah ta'ala will end for today. Wa billahi ta'ala tawfiq wa hadi ila sabil wal akhida wa alhamdulillah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh.